As is often the case with hard geometry questions, I have no idea how to solve this when I first look at it, okay? So you cannot panic when you get to something where you're like, oh my God, I've never seen a question like this before, this is insane. Yeah, okay, maybe you've never seen a question exactly like this before, but you've seen hard questions, you've seen circle questions, that you've seen geometry questions, this is gonna involve the same things that you know. So you have to be able to just kinda like start the process. So what most of you should do to start is grab your scratch paper and start drawing, right? So we have a circle, so there's our circle. It has a, a center of HK. So, okay, there's my center. I, I guess I can call it HK. And then it has this point randomly on there and it's gonna make, uh, it actually has two points randomly on the outside of the circle that make a right angle with the center. So um, I have no idea where those points are. I'm just gonna kinda draw a right angle. And here's A and that's H plus one. So H plus one. K plus radical 102, and here's B, but we don't have anything about those coordinates, and we need to find the length of AB. So if you've done only that, you should at least already be halfway to solving the question, because what shape did we just make by drawing the picture? A triangle. Now notice they did not mention triangles at all in the question, but just by drawing it, just by getting it out of our brain and onto a page, we see the most important step for solving this thing. Not only is it a triangle, but it's a right triangle. It's an isosceles right triangle, which means that it is a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. This is very predictable. This is one of those uh, uh, triangles or formulas that is in the reference chart. So we're probably gonna use that in some way. But we've gotta get there, right? We only, we don't have anything about this this, tri uh, this circle right now, so that does that means we don't have anything about the triangle, but it is nice that the triangle basically lines up with the radius of the circle. And anytime we have difficult geometry questions that involve circles, odds are very good that we need to find the radius in some way. So here though, it might be difficult. We have no dimensions of any kind for this thing, and we have this really weird set of points. Here's what I would do. At this point, I'd be like, well, this point A is a mess. But it doesn't say what the value of H is. It doesn't say what the value of K is. So maybe they don't matter. Maybe I can arithmetize, right? Maybe I can just make up some numbers. And what would be the easiest center for this circle? How about zero, zero? Because then I don't have to worry really about any sort of complexity here, right? So this center quickly just becomes something really simple. But also this other point, right? What is zero plus one, right? That's one. What is K, if K is zero, plus radical 102 is just radical 102. So at this point now, it's a little bit simpler of a point. Um, from here, is this, is this is where the hardest step is. You have to recognize that you've gotta use the circle equation to solve this thing. And you could have used that equation with the H and the K, but it's just harder to do. So the reason I would go to this next step pretty easily is my brain is always in plug points into equations mode. And if I've got both points and equations, I'm gonna plug the points into the equations without a second thought. In this case, I only have points, right? I have the center and I have one's radical 102. So I can plug both of those points in different ways into my circle equation, right? So I know from memory that the equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Well, once we made up H and K being zero, zero, we got rid of a lot of the complexity here. Basically, these parts are gonna go away and our simpler version is X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. Now, the reason plug points into equations is so useful is we very quickly get rid of a lot of the uncertainty about an equation, right? And I don't have to worry, I'm gonna be able to solve for this radius now because I have an X and a Y that I can plug in, right? So one squared plus radical 102 squared is equal to R squared. Well, I know it's scary with a radical, but the squared makes it go away, right? So one plus 103 is R squared. So, uh, or sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. One plus 102 is R squared. So 103 is R squared, meaning the square root of 103 is the radius. Now, this gets back to what I said earlier. Whenever we have hard geometry questions with circles, we're gonna use the radius. Radiuses are great because every radius is the same. It goes from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle, and they're all the same length. So once I have the radius, I have the two lengths of this triangle, uh, the two legs, I should say, radical 103. Now, if you wanted to, you could do Pythagorean theorem, or you can go to the reference chart. And remember that the way that this works is you have the X 
x and x root two sides for a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So if the x is radical 103, then x root two is going to be radical 103 times radical two, which if we needed to, we'd get a calculator for, but it doesn't really matter. This is just gonna be multiplied in a normal way. So we get radical 206, which is choice A, which is the answer. So I had no idea that I was gonna use all these pieces when I started this question out. I was scared because yeah, like I've never seen a question like this, but I'm also confident because I know that even though it looks completely new to me, it's the same stuff that have been on the SAT for, you know, decades now, right? There's, there's circles, there's triangles, the, you know, that's it. That's this common geometry knowledge, right? So if we think about that, what are the pieces of this question really? Well, there's the circle equation, there's a special triangle, but that's kind of it, maybe a little bit of radicals knowledge. I think the key thing though, is that it becomes much easier for me because from the start, I did some arithmetizing and I was thinking about plug points and do equations. It strips away a lot of the algebra, right? Because otherwise this is an algebra question. We could have plugged H plus one and K plus radical 102 into the circle equation like I did with my simpler version. But you know, it's just scarier to do that, right? Cause you gotta worry about all the numbers and the equation and all the letters now, right? So it's scarier to make that move and you think, oh, I don't wanna go down that path. It's very time consuming and it might not get me what I want. But for me, by just making zero, zero the center of the circle, I, I washed a lot of that away. I simplified it. And the reason I was so confident that would work is like, I mean, it works a lot. It's really just experience. And so this is why you have to try these strategies, even when you're not sure if they're gonna work, they might fail occasionally, but you get better and better and better at knowing when they're gonna succeed. And even just trying it doesn't really take a lot of time. So this is a hard question. It might be one that you skip so you can get to the numbers 21 and 22. But at the end of the day, this is not that twisted. It just feels scary at first. But if you are confident with how the SAT takes the basic pieces of geometry and, and arithmetic and algebra and puts them together in these complicated ways, it becomes much easier to untwist the question, just get back to those basics. But you have to have some confidence in yourself and some confidence in strategies like arithmetize and plug points into equations.